The first thing that comes to mind when we say VFX might be big explosions and spectacular distraction effects. But actually, VFX is something that is not shot during production, which means it is simply any footage or assets that have been created using CGI and enhanced or manipulated in post-production. VFX often involves the integration of live-action footage that were shot in different times and places, in addition to CGI elements, green screens, and so on. Today, every production relies on VFX, whether it be explosions and destructions, crowd simulations for comedy shows, etc., and most importantly, invisible effects that you don't even realize they exist. Various techniques are used in VFX, including green screen, matte painting, motion capture, CGI animations, rotoscoping, match moving, and compositing. Each technique has its own set of dedicated software. For example, rotoscoping is done with the help of Silhouette software, while compositing is done with Nuke, and for match moving, we have also 3D Equalizer, and these are industry standard software. Alongside compositing and rotoscoping, 3D applications play a pivotal role in visual effects and while every single package is used to a certain extent, such as Moto, Lightwave, Blender, and Cinema 4D, when it comes to VFX, three main packages dominate the industry, which are Maya, Houdini, and 3ds Max. These 3D software are used in every CGI movie for the most part, and they are used for things including modeling, rigging, animation, rendering, crowd simulations, effects, and matte painting. Max itself was used in many blockbuster movies, including 2012, The Blade Trinity, Avatar, The Day After Tomorrow, Harry Potter movies, and Iron Man, just to name a few. Major VFX studios such as Hocus Pocus, Views Effects, Scan Line, and ILM all use 3ds Max for VFX work. If you are interested in learning more about how to make your own 3D projects, I recommend you try Skillshare. It is a learning platform that has thousands of classes on a variety of different topics. You can go now and get access to hundreds of classes about 3D modeling, animation, game development, video editing, you name it. For example, you have this class called Unreal Engine 5 for Beginners, Learn the Basics of Virtual Production, in which you will go through the basics such as the user interface, materials and lights, how to create environments, lighting, cameras, rendering, and so much more. And the good thing is, it is very affordable. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Now, we will explore some features that make studios and professionals choose Max to do their work. And this is the case because some use it as their main 3D package or in a pipeline alongside Maya and Houdini since studios are often organized in different departments. When it comes to VFX work, you can see Max for the most part as a plugin hub. It is its most important asset, I might say. A platform with an impressive number of excellent plugins in addition to scripts that can cover all aspects of production. The Max script scripting language and Python allow studios to write their own tools or pipeline integration, which is very important in big productions or big teams, because sometimes they need to create custom tools to get the job done, especially when it is something new or something that is very complicated. Some people might argue about this point, but one of the most important things about using Max is its ability to use a huge number of polygons in one scene, which is mandatory for heavy projects involving VFX or environments that need to work with billions of polygons. Modeling-wise, Max is one of the best polygonal modelers because it comes with a rich poly editing toolset, in addition to spline workflows and the modifier stack with dozens of modifiers. This allows you as a user to iterate on designs in a semi-procedural way. The complete suite of 3D creation is also present. This includes UV mapping, texturing, and material creation with node-based light editor. Max also excels at scene layout and management. The layer manager neatly organizes the scenes into layers. The XREF system allows reference external objects into a scene. There is a system for groups, collections, reference managements, and the list goes on. For environments, alongside the native modeling tools, I2 Forest Pack is widely used for the scattering of vegetation or even buildings. Other tools include Grow Facts or Plant Factory for plant generation and vegetation. For set dressing, Debris Maker and Physics Painter are a fine example of many scripts that simplify the task of populating scenes with 3D models. Also, support for camera projection and mapping is also present with the camera map modifier. When it comes to animation, Max offers a robust toolset for animation, 
but it is not its strongest suit, I might add. There is keyframing with interpolation, a curve editor, a dope sheet view, animation constraints, animation controllers, parameters wiring, object linking with hierarchy, and so on. You can animate almost any parameter from object's position to modifiers and even colors in the material editor. On the character animation side, three options are available. Creating your own custom rig with FK, IK, and parenting bones, and creating helpers to control the rig. There is actually a complete suite of controllers and modifiers to help you with this task. Character Studio is 3ds Max's toolset for animating 3D characters, using MyPad as its base, and CAD, which is a procedural lagged creature animation system that lets you animate without using keyframes. On the mechanical aspect, many plugins are here to help you animate vehicles. We also have Craft Director tools that focus on cars, in addition to planes and cameras. Other options include Mad Car and Drive Master to help you rig cars and see the traffic to simulate the car flow on the road. When it comes to effects, this is an area in which Max has a lot of plugins and options for simulating fluids like water, lava, and so on. We have RealFlow, for example. It has a multi physics engine which can also simulate granular, viscous, and viscoelastic materials. Resident Evil Retribution, Dread 3D, Immortals are some of the films that used real flow with 3ds Max. For realistic fire, smoke, explosions, and other gaseous phenomena, Fume Effects is also a favorite among visual effects artists. It's well integrated into Max and it is compatible with V Ray, Redshift, and Arnold render engines. It has a lot of feature films under its belt, which helped it earn its reputation. It is an artist-friendly simulation plugin for Max with a wide range of effects including fire, smoke, liquids, flames, explosions, rigid body simulations, ocean waves, mists and splashes, and so on. We are talking about Thinking Particles, which is a very complex plugin. It is a node-based procedural VFX tool for Max that has an advanced multi-physics engine with seven different solvers for sand, fluids, gas, and more than 50 operators, in addition to Simula data exchange with other plugins, volume control, etc. It is probably the most advanced visual effects plugin on the market that kept 3ds Max going for many years and made it the go-to software for VFX for many studios. In the effects category, we also have Typeflow which is a replacement for the native 3ds Max particle flow with solvers that can handle rigid bodies, crowds, grains, cloth, ropes, and all kinds of other materials and simulations. Typeflow can also be used directly with Phoenix FD, HumeFX, and Ornatrix. Additional modifiers, helpers, controllers, texture maps, and other tools can make it an integral part of a procedural content creation pipeline. There are actually other tools such as Krakatoa, which is good for rendering particles, also Frost and AQ Mesher for particle meshing, ray fire and pull down it for rigid bodies, and so on and so forth. When it comes to rendering, Max has a lot of render engines, more than 10 render engines available, including Maxwell, Octane, Redshift, Cycles, V-Ray, Radeon Pro Render, and so on. Production renderers need to have good volumetrics and VDB support, in addition to photorealistic results, flexible shading systems, a solid SDK, and render passes output among others. In general, VMVX requires a large amount of RAM due to the complexity of the scenes it needs to work with, so CPU renderers which have access to system RAM are preferred. Three renderers are at the top of the list, including Arnold, RenderMan, and V-Ray. Arnold is the default render engine for Max. It was used for many films, such as Pacific Rim, Guardians of the Galaxy, and others. It has a subsurface scatter quality shader, very good volumetric rendering, and it is specifically good at rendering metallic surfaces. V-Ray is one of the most prolific render engines. It started as a 3ds Max plugins for architectural visualization, and with time, it became a render engine that can do many, many things, including VFX rendering. It has been used on VFX heavy movies, including The Avengers and Game, San Andreas, Iron Man 3, and so on. It is fast with a long list of features such as volumetric shading, OSL support, GPU previews, light path expressions, and it is now widely used in studios in all sorts of projects. It might not look like it for people who don't know Max, but actually it is a powerhouse package for VFX. With the right tools and plugins it has, everything you need to create for big projects is available, from modeling environments to simulating floods and explosions. I hope you found this video informative. 
If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.